Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to RimWorld Alpha 13. We are recording once again off the tail end of the previous episodes. We turned a pirate raid into basically an accidental declaration of war against the lair of the forest tribes people because amongst the fallen was mouse a rather useless tribe person so we captured mouse and they declared the war on us so we now have to make up for that in a, in a bit in addition to that we of course have to recover so it's gonna cost some steel to rebuild here. I am gonna use the steel because of course we do want to set our defenses up. Uh, let's see, so let's just line an extra bit of power here so the final turret can get power even if the previous two explode. See if it, happen if it works or not. Disable the power over there. We disable the power over here. And then, of course, we have more corpses to deal with. There's only a couple, it's not too many, which is okay. And, of course, there's a bunch of items scattered about. Eclipse during the morning is okay. I hope the eclipse is not going to last overly long. Because our batteries are empty. Well, I say that, but we do have our batteries here still. We should open this one up so we actually can power our base. Yeah, that works. So critical mode for Artinius. Why? Why oh why? You obs observed corpses, feeling bad, ate without a table, and you are in darkness. I think you should just go to bed. Seems like a good idea. So the previous raid, or the previous two raids, um, both went off without a hitch. We did not lose a single colonist. As a result, it might be that we're going to get attacked soon again. Because most of the times attacks have been coming in pairs. But every time we lose a colonist, the timer for raids is going to get reset. And basically we get a little bit of breathing space to recover from the attack. Because we didn't lose anyone. And of course, the timer is ticking on. Can't do much for Artinius right now. Who is really working themselves into uh, a bad situation. Or maybe, maybe... Okay. It's 10 o'clock. It's bedtime for you, Artinius. Okay, it is. Good. So you're going to recover and hopefully not break. It's okay. Nemesis is cleaning... Darkness, yeah, it's building. We are just gonna recover. We're gonna hold the corpses in. We're gonna hold all the items in. Once we've done that, we're gonna continue with what we were doing before. We still wanna build up our defensive emplacements over there. We wanna build a wall, so attacks from the south are gonna get funneled through our, uh, our turrets rather than from the side. And hopefully get a bit of a better defensive position that way. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff left to do. Of course, all these prisoners in here, we want to release those. We don't plan on keeping as soon as possible. Get the, pop the prisoner population down before we get riots. But that's going to happen soon enough. So mouse, we are kicking out. We're walking again, so that means we can release you. And then over here, I think Psyche is also on the list or getting released. You've been patched up. That means you're gonna get released. Uh, let's see, Brandon, what are you doing? You're relaxing socially. Posto has been scheduled for chat, but you're gonna get released as well. So that means we can strip Fosto. And we're too late for that one. Cool, now we can prioritize stripping mouse and kicking them out. Good, good. 
Okay, we have a couple of traps untriggered. Most of them are still active, so potentially we'll lose some. Okay, so Psyche is triggering the traps. Hopefully Mouse is not. Seriously, Psyche, you really are lousy at stepping past traps. Really, really lousy. And of course, Fosto gets a tribal wear outfit. Oh, now that we are at war with the tribes people, we're going to get a lot of tribal wear outfits. It all works out rather well. Cold snap. Oh, that's early in spring. Luckily, we are, of course, we have a greenhouse. Keep our greenhouse nice and warm. So even if it's going to freeze outside, potentially bad for the trees, but not for us. So that's all fine. It's all good. So we can accelerate the time again. This will eventually clear itself up. We can set this one to be a non-medical. Like that. Then we can just take these bunks away. Or these sleeping spots on the floor. Alan, you have recovered. So, you can actually sleep in a proper bed. Let's see. We are nice. We are benevolent. You should join us. Well, if we actually manage to recruit those people, then we're going to go from 8 to 10. Oh, we actually have enough sleeping spaces. I mean, we did build two extra rooms that can go to the new recruits. So we're still good. And if we ever get some lovers, then we can put two in a room and get out, out on top even better. Uh, light has destroyed our crops. Of course. Well, we got 1700 veggies in store. We have medicine. We have cloth. We have everything. So it's not that bad a deal. Marco and Colonel have formed a bond. So our animals, we can actually just let them go outdoors again. And then just link them again to Marco. Because Marco has the animal bonds. And then hopefully have the animals do some hauling. Because there is a lot of hauling that needs to be done. It's negative 12 out. It's 18 indoors. Yes, we are generating enough power. Oh, mostly generating enough power. Oh, wow, new recruit. We recruited Alan. Alan. So, yeah, you're going to be our chief researcher and everything else is going to be a bonus. You can actually shoot. What's your... 6.5%. Okay, so that's good. That's very good. Then you're going to be a ranged person. Gonna assign you to the double joy routine that we've been assigning everybody. Uh, under assign, you can fight and you are gonna get. Oh, it's spring now, so we're gonna get you the summer soldier outfit. Oh, with the cold snap, I think we're actually gonna stick with winter for now. Well, technically for spring, we could switch over to the summer outfit. Okay, that gets you an outfit. We need to give you a weapon. Also, we need to give you a name. Um, Alan. You are going to be known as... Let me quickly scroll over to my list. Yes, you're going to be known as Corbin. Welcome to the Colony Corbin. And uh, a work schedule. So firefighting and being a patient is going to be good for you. You are not a doctor. Bed rest and flicking switches are important. And then research is going to be what you do as well as animal handling. Those, those are your two main concerns in life. After that, holding cleaning is okay. And then uh, cooking, tailoring, crafting. And I would say we're going to give you the opportunity to do a lot of low level crafting in order to hone your skill if you are not researching. Also means 
Oh, well, we'll just see whoever gets to the opportunity first. I mean, crafting, we have plenty of crafting jobs. So that's fine as well. It would be nice if we could get someone to just be machining all the time. Which is technically not part of crafting, which is part of smithing. So we're going to erase the priority of that. And see how things work out. But that's a very, very quick recruitment. Artinius is still just through. Ah, you're flicking the switch, even though Enzo is standing beside it. Uh, efficiency. So during the day, we are going to hopefully increase our power supply again. But yeah, we've been running guns on it for a while, which is not ideal. Which is also why it was empty after yesterday. And yeah, we're out of power now. So temperature is going to drop rather harshly. Well, we do have the generators that we can enable. For situations like this, generators are really nice as just backup power sources. And because it's already day, we're not going to turn anything off. We will until with it. Let's see, there's some visitors, but there's not a trader amongst them. That's too bad. What is everybody doing? David is cooking. Marco is cremating. And the eclipse is ending so we get our power generation back. Yes, that was what was wrong. Okay, currently we are generating almost 13,000 power. So we can disable these. Yeah, so we were draining power, but it was also not regenerating. And then you got an interesting mix. Nemesis keeps a cleaning colonel. Have you been trained yet? Partially. Okay, that's good. Naomi, just wondering, should be able to... Yeah, okay, so we're gonna expand the animal outdoors area a little bit. So the animals can actually haul after a raid. Because it would be really convenient if we can just have the animals drag in some of the, the items like these. And similarly, let's also access, let them access this bit. Yeah. And let them access to the dump over here. I think that's going to be generous enough for just regular going. The reason we're not using the home area is because we don't want to get them, let them get into our fridge and eat human food. We got kibble and hay for the animals. So they're not always hauling, they're just doing it whenever they feel like it. But we got a couple of people hauling stuff about, so... That's pretty good. Ah, Corbin is cutting stone. Yes, yes. Want to get up to a thousand again. Because we are, of course, using quite some stone to build our walls. Not quite in order to make sculptures, but well, got better things to do than making sculptures. You're hauling berries. That's also important work. 18 whole berries. And Dagnesia is just simply continuing the work here. Okay, so the back line has been dug out. Whoa, mad animal. What's the mad animal? A local muffalo has gone mad. Well, if just a single muffalo, then that is free meat for us on the table. I'm not going to complain about that. 
Nope, not at all. Okay, let's let's see. Let's just uh, set Brandon up here. David's gonna also hunt the buffalo. Brandon is gonna defend themselves, and it's all gonna be good. David, yes, you're gonna hunt the buffalo from over there. Yes, like that. Oh, poor buffalo. Free meat, as I said. I do like it. Uh, look. Naomi over there. Oh, just wondering. It's really close. It's almost like just contemplating whether to haul or not. Ah, taking steel away. Maybe rather than hauling slag about, you should focus a little bit more on hauling spoilables. No, don't want to be too nitpicky here, but we do have some useful things out here. Okay, you are claiming research, that's fine. And another raid. But another family member. Nemesis' sister is in there. That's Slasher Jones. Okay. They will prepare for a while, then attack. This is quite a group. Let's see, can we get a, an account? No, it's all various. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's another one behind there, so nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So they're gonna attack from the south. They're coming from here, so chances are they'll stream around the rock into our defenses. That that's okay. Also, the animals are now gonna be assigned to the livestock area. We are also unbonding them or unmastering them. We don't want them anywhere near the front lines. We are gonna restrict our people to the base area as well. That's gonna recall uh, people like Dragnesia from here. Uh, and there's, there's plenty of stuff to do indoors anyway. That's good. And then once they decide to attack... Well, we do want to be prepared, wouldn't we? Um, animals? Well, I was just wondering. That's not quite what I had in mind. But can't control the dogs. Wait, we got Corbin to join us, but Corbin, of course, doesn't have a weapon. Because we're not assigning Corbin as a hunter, we didn't get a mess uh, message about this. But your accuracy was pretty good, so you should actually get a backup assignment as a hunter. And then we're going to get you a gun. Gonna, then at least you can defend us. We have a sniper. But at 96%, that's still quite a, uh, a high chance to miss. Snipers are more for the 99%ers. So we're just going to get you a normal charge rifle. So I don't think we got anything better. Got some poor stuff. And that's, that's kind of it. And then everybody else, we're just going to put on alert, I think. Just going to... Properly prepared this time. Um, let's see. Enable the power here. Enable the power there. I think we might be able to just let Nemesis take care of base stuff. Because of course Nemesis being a Malir doesn't really help a lot. So could you flick the switch please. And once Corbin has been equipped we're just going to send you over to the front lines as well. So all the guns have been activated. We are burning uh, quite some power. We have some reserves, but they are not limitless. We could do disable the lights here and then enable the switch. That way we can use the reserves from this battery as well to fuel our 
fight. And we're going to disable the two most expensive pyro consumers. And Nemesis is just going to fix that for us while we set up. So Marco with the sniper. I'm going to put you on the corner there. Tinius over there. Dagnesia here. You over there. You over uh, there. You over there. You over there. Maybe, 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 maybe. If they're trying to flank us. No, nope. if having someone over here to just shoot them could help. We'll see. Wait, what? You're walking around all the way there rather than just straight through? What am I missing here? Why are you walking in such an inefficient way? Um, if they're coming from the front, we might as well just put you out there. You're flicking switches still. Okay, that, that's fine. And they're beginning their assault. Right, now you're resting, so that means we're gonna recruit you. Actually, no, we'll just let you. Recruits. Yeah, it's tricky because they're all meleers. We don't really want to pitch melee against melee because that's going to be dangerous because they will be prepared for it. While if they're putting our meleers against their ranged, their ranged are not going to be able to hit back in a very efficient manner. So for now, Nemesis gets to sleep, everybody else and gets to fight. Life sometimes is not fair that way. Let's see how this goes. Speed 2 for the approach. Okay, they are the fighting, mostly going through here. Wow, that was a was that an instant death with a sniper rifle? That's nice. Okay, so Corbin here, the range is just not enough to be effective. That's okay. Yep, we're gonna set you up here. And I think this is about the extent of the damage that we could do. Let's retreat people back to defensible positions indoors. One downside of this strategy is we're ending up losing quite a bunch of turrets and therefore we're using quite some steel in the process. Which is not the most efficient way to deal with things. On the other hand, if they all bunch up and get hit by the same explosion, well, <laughs> suddenly Carol is just completely naked with the exception of the shield. Close, it can explode. Ooh. Works rather well. So a third line of sandbags might make this even better. Makes it even harder for them to retreat. And therefore they will get hit more. But yeah, we're just losing four turrets in a row but this definitely does have its downsides it's not a cheap strategy but most of the bubbles has been cleared seriously jones are you gonna try to knock through the door it's smart and now they're fleeing okay so we're just gonna set everybody up for murdering over there Uh, oh, this is not going to be good. This is not going to be good. If we open up that door, we're going to sh uh, get shot ourselves. That's that's an issue. Um, it means we need to disable the guns. Well, what we could do is send out a couple of people over here and then just shoot Merc in the back after that we can move through excellent oh capture someone over there and the three of you can just set up there see if we can shoot some folks might they be able to hit Horton I don't think so though Pretty is the 
extent of our range. Oh, wow. Sweet. Okay, well. That went rather well. Not for them, but did go rather well for us. There's a, a wounded bear over there. Hypothermia, shivering, yeah, Midlands kind of naked here. So does that mean that you are also moving slower? 60%. Uh, not gonna chase after. That's not worth it. Not worth our time. So you have all been released from duty. Merc uh, died. I thought Merc was bleeding out. I guess it didn't take too long for Merc to die. But it did inflict a boatload of damage. That is the biggest downside of Odol. And you have been released from duty as well. This Grizzly. Major untreated infection. I think grizzly, bear, uh, grizzly meat is back on the menu. Not quite sure how it works with infected meat or not. But we shall find out. Um, let's not put it over there. And then for security. Can we? Is this really worth it? Maybe that, that's a better way to, to put the question. Are these turrets really worth it? Because we spent 700 steel on those turrets. Are we going to... Is it going to be worth our while? Well, there is enough slag and stuff to just reclaim at least bits of the of the turrets. And there's 21... Okay, excluding that one, there's 20 uh, bits of uh, slag. I believe every bit of slag is 10 steel, so that's 200 steel. And then if we zoom in... Uh, ignoring that, uh, let's see, 75, this is also another 75, so there's about 350 steel. So we, we get half of the steel back. And it does, it, it did allow us to murder quite a bunch of attackers, so I think we, we will actually just risk it. Like that. So we're just going to rebuild the, the, the turrets, as I mentioned, we're going to add another layer of sandbags in front to just delay the attackers, make it harder for, more difficult for them to run away, therefore more of them getting caught in the blast. And over here, there is no permanent damage, which I'm really, really happy with. So we have disabled our power switches, so that's going to be good. Power switch here is going to be disabled. We can enable the lights again and then disable the link with the main power generator. And then people should just fix things. Animals are back to the animal outdoors so they can once again help us and we have Corbin hit the trap. Seriously, nobody got injured in the fight and then Corbin springs a trap. Oh, well, could have been worse. Could have been instant death. I mean, getting spiked through the head or something by one of those traps uh, can be lethal. I'm telling you to rest until healed rather than going out and doing whatever. We have work to do. Um, Brandon, sorry to wake you up, but you are going to have to treat Corbin. I want to get infections here. And with a bit of luck, a lot of the problems will be dealt with by Artinius. We're just repairing everything. Probably not getting happy seeing all the corpses. Yeah, like that. But there's that. We're gonna enable this one in the morning. Gonna enable that one again as well in the morning. And I think we're gonna make Artinius uh, hold some corpses. Cause 
Working around corpses is pretty not a happy thing. And Artinius already has the negative moodlets anyway. Might as well stack them. I'm not really sure if that, that's the wise idea or not, but... Well. Celery. You're consuming a package to survive from here. I don't think you want to do that. Just make you carry more corpses and then we're gonna send you to pick up a proper meal. Not that survivor junk. You got negative moodlets. You want to at least get a happy from your meal rather than uh, merely getting fed. See, ate a fine meal. That's plus five. That offsets two corpses. So it's daytime. It's gonna be bedtime for you soon. And then someone else can carry in the last of the corpses. And the cold snap is now over. And it is spring, so I'm gonna assign everybody now to their summer outfits. Nemesis needs a summer brawler outfit. We don't have one yet. So let's edit new outfit. Soldier uh, melee summer. We only want to, to wear good quality or good HP and good quality gear. We don't like tribal wear. Also no parkas. Dusters and jackets are all fine. And no Tukes or psychic foils. Military gear is fine. And of course, as a melee, you get a personal shield. Let's compare that with this one. Indeed, it's normal or better. So then we can upgrade you. And everybody is going to be running around swapping out their clothes real soon. But we've passed the half hour mark yet again and we had some excitement this episode. I think this is a nice point to put in a cut. We will have to recover and rebuild a little bit. We still have to set up our defenses here and now that things have been properly mined out we do see that there is more to mine here. So let's do that. Uh, might as well just keep things up. We do have enough space here for a structure. So let's do the final thing. Set up some uh, power here. Let's see. We're going to make it three high on the inside or we're going to make it four. Put one here. Put one there. Put a little bit of space in between. Could put two walls in. Yeah, let's, let's do that. So this is going to be the back wall. Then we can already place some walls over here, but we do want things to remain reachable. So we do with this, but this is going to be a bit of a, a service corridor until things have been fixed and we can work our way backwards. Similarly, the guns are going to be here and there. So we can put a small wall in between. Top side is not going to be anything exciting. So just going to do it like this. And then we have some space for mining behind the, the turrets. And then for now, we're just gonna leave this one open. So we have a way to access this without having to walk over the turrets because it's slow to, crawl, to climb over the turrets. Now we have something defensible set up. And this is, as you might remember, completely extending the power from over there. Um, Let's see, we want to connect this bit as well. So this is going to be a weak spot. Um, now that we have things, we probably want to extend a power cable or optionally link it here. I like that better. We're going to put a, a power toggle over here. And this is going to be yet another cable and we put a switch down here. So once it's done building, the switch is going to be enabled, which might not be the best. Um, but we're going to deal with that next episode. So our plans have been installed and we can just execute on them next time. So for now, 
I'm gonna thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.